Zach, how you been, man? I'm good. How about y'all? Can I complain? How's Daddy Duty? That's fine. He's sitting in the swing next to me. I might have to go get him at some point. He's fussing a little bit. So. Ah, uh, well, that's what he's supposed to do. That's his. That's his only job in life right now. <laughs> Eat, sleep, and fuss. Pretty much, yeah. That's that's pretty accurate. Uh, it's the silly time, uh, I guess you call it, of the season now. Uh, basketball is not quite ended with the Final Four looming, but uh, it is ended for all the other, all, everyone else except for those four teams. Uh, the transfer portal is on everyone's mind. We've been talking about that. Uh, who's yet to, to stay or go? Of course, Trace and Race, the, the two names that, that are sitting there. Um, we're, Nigel Pack will probably most likely he's going to end up at Purdue. Um, you could actually potentially see Rob Fennessy at Purdue, which uh, I was thinking of earlier. I'm like, wow, that's something that I think could probably never have happened. Um, it's happened in football, obviously, here last season, but uh, I, I can't imagine uh, someone that has played basketball at, at IU has went to play at Purdue. Uh, certainly not in my my memory. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I can't. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. Obviously, I'm sure it's. I'm sure it has happened at some point or another. Obviously, it's happened in football. You know, we've seen Demar J. Lewis and, and Samson James, and now Reese Taylor go up there. And I think it's probably one of those things that gets normalized a little bit more with the portal. I think, you know, we we sometimes maybe lose sight of the fact when you, when you get caught up in the rivalry that these kids still know each other, still respect each other. I mean, Rob Finnessy's family lives in Lafayette. Like, if that's an opportunity for him, and I think Jaden Ivey's already out the door at Purdue, who else went through senior day? I think Eric Hunter, Trevion Williams, and Sasha Stefanovic, if they all elect to leave, like, there's there's an obvious need for somebody like that. And, you know, I'm sure some IU fans will, will, will be sore about it, and I get that. But I think ultimately for the player, it's about a combination of, of opportunity and – um, you know, just, I don't know, priority, like what, what matters, still being able to play close to home, still being able to, um, you know, for your family to come see you. I don't think it's, I don't think it would be because of some deep seated loyalty Rob Finnessy's held to Purdue all these last four years. I think it's just because, Hey, this is, you know, this, this, this makes a lot of sense now. It fits for him. And, and for one year, he's going to go do it. For Indiana, uh, a positive is that they seem to be set uh, in the perimeter area right now, uh, not expecting to lose anyone else along those lines. And you know, you, you know what you have coming in uh, with CJ Gunn and Jalen Hood Shafino, of course, Banks as well, but those two up front. And I, I, I think Jalen Hood Shafino, someone is probably going to start. Um, how much CJ can manage to play is that simply will. The, the, be determined by if he can transfer his perimeter shooting to the college game, he'll earn minutes because that's something Indiana obviously desperately needs. Now, whether it that is it's easier said than done, obviously, because the defense is everything's the game's faster, defenses are, are better. Uh, but if he can, that's something that Indiana desperately needs. These are two guys that can impact this team, uh, in, in some ways immediately. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think Jalen Hushafino in particular, the, the, maybe the one question around that is, you know, it, it, he seems like a guy who's going to, you're going to get the best out of him putting the ball in his hands. Um, but you also want the ball in Xavier Johnson's hands. You know, I mean, he's, he's coming off the, the fifth best single season assist total in program history. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty clear that kind of by the end of the season, anyway, it, it got to a point where, he was one of those guys where, you know, so Xavier Johnson goes, so goes IU basketball. So how you fit those two together and whether you can play either of them off the ball for any sustained period of time is certainly part of that. But the flip side is you had lots of room for Finnessy and Xavier Johnson to play together and still to even find minutes for Trey Galloway on the on the point or whatever it was. There should be possessions there. There should be minutes there. Um the question is just going to be how you fit those two together. And then I think with Gunn, as with a number of those, you know, Anthony Leo, this is probably true of as well. If he can hit shots, you'll find minutes for him. If he can hit freeze, you'll find minutes for him because this team needs that badly. 
And uh, speaking of Jalen Hood Shafino playing, he, he's played with Sky Clark, uh, at least for the past full season. And Sky Clark, uh, of course, a point guard who was going to Kentucky and now is he is uh, decommitted there. But uh, so he is quite accustomed to playing the uh, one and a half, I guess you call it. It's it's a two, but it's really you're still you can still be a, a point guard. It's kind of like having two point guards or a, a, a B point guard of sorts, uh, which is not a bad thing as long as it doesn't disrupt the flow of what you're trying to do offensively. I mean, that's the question. It just does it does it mess with your offense at all? And it's kind of the opposite of I think where Purdue wound up this year, where. I think they, they they struggled sometimes to feel like they were getting the most out of um, out of Jaden Ivey because ultimately Jaden Ivey became their best point guard, but Jaden Ivey can't pass to himself. So if you put him on the ball to create and make plays, then you're losing whatever threat he can provide off the ball, hunting shots or rim runs or whatever. It's kind of the opposite of that where it's, you know, does one of those guys become too superfluous? If you move him off the ball or can Jalen Hood Shafino be a guy that, that can be a volume shot maker when he's not on the floor or excuse me, when he's not on the ball, not when he's not on the floor. Um, but when he's, when he's not on the ball, can he be a guy that can be a volume shot maker? Can you, um, you know, can you build an offense? Frankly, I think, I think we saw Mike Woodson have some success toward the end of this season, figuring out essentially using those ball screens, how to replace, shooters with drivers and just sort of say, well, we're not going to be able to shoot the ball well. That's not going to change. It's, it's it's just very clear that this team is just not going to suddenly wake up one day and shoot 38% from three. So at very least, maybe what we do is we surround Xavier Johnson with dudes that can drive the ball. And if he can have success in that sort of high-low ball screen, you know, offensive setup in breaking defenses down, if defenses want to collapse – He's not kicking it out to a shooter because we don't have enough of those. But suddenly he kicks it out to another guy who can immediately hit you off the bounce when your defense is scrambled and in rotation and there's a hole somewhere. So maybe there's a little bit of that as well. I still think ultimately Indiana needs to get to a place where it can hit some threes, obviously. Yes. Um, and if you can find a way to get one or both of those guys to do all right off the ball. I mean, you see that at the pro level. Like the Hawks move Trey Young off the ball. And they do it because they want him. They they want to run sets for him to get threes. Now he spends most of his time running point, but there is there is there are pronounced stretches in games where he's essentially the two on offense because they want to run him off screens and get him shots and things like that. You can make that work. It's just a challenge a coach has to figure out. You know, kind of how to attack. Yeah, I mean, I think Indiana. I won't be surprised to see them a little smaller in the next couple of years as. People were so used to seeing race and trace on the floor at the same time this year. I, that's not going to be the case, I don't think, going forward. I think it's going to be more of the the four four out, one in that we've heard a lot about, but we haven't seen a lot of that because Indiana has not had the personnel to do that. No, and, and I mean, listen, the, the other thing is you can just kind of do the math. Like if trace and race both leave, you know, Logan Duncan is kind of the only – true post left. I mean, Jordan Geronimo, I think, is a four, but I think he's a small ball four. Now, that sort of seems to be what Mike Woodson might be most comfortable playing at times, and I think there are ways that can work. And, like, you don't have to give up certain things for that to work. Like, for example, Jordan Geronimo can still be your shot-blocking presence. You know, I mean, um, last season we talked so much about how much better Trace Jackson Davis got protecting the rim, his, his block rate went up from 4.8% in 2021 to 8.4% last year. He had the number three block rate in the Big Ten, 7.5% in Big Ten games alone. But, like, guess what? Jordan Geronimo actually had a higher conference-only block rate, substantially higher, 9.1%. Now, the flip side is Geronimo needs to learn how to defend without fouling. But I bring up Geronimo because a lot of Trace's blocks were trailer blocks, backside blocks, Stuff where he went hunting for it, not the, you know, not sort of like the the, the traditional just long armed rim protector goes up and block. Kofi Cober maybe would be a, a better example there. A lot of traces blocks were stuff he went looking for. He was given the freedom and the license to go looking for 
for those opportunities. Jordan Geronimo can do a lot of that. So, you, yes, you're giving up size. Like Jordan Geronimo is 6'6", six, six, maybe 6'7". Six, Race Tom, or Trace Jackson Davis is 6'9". But Jordan Geronimo can still give you some of that impact, even if you're playing smaller. Now, you know, do you want to start a front line that's like 6'6", six, 6'7"? Six, six, Obviously, that's, you know, that's a lot to give up. But I don't think it's hard to see a path for Indiana to get smaller next year. It's just if you're going to play smaller and the entry points in your offense are going to be guys like Xavier Johnson and Jalen Hutchifino rather than post-ups through Trace Jackson Davis, then you had better be ready to knock down some shots. And I think that would be good for Indiana long-term to become more guard-driven on offense because I think Indiana's offense could get very stale at times, and and not even stale, more slow. Like that, if you had to deliberately in any half-court set start with a post-up, that meant the ball had to go to one side of the floor, your post had to do a good job of posting up and give you a good target, then you had to dump it down, then that post player needs to survey, well, all of a sudden we've just knocked 11 seconds off the shot clock, and the whole thing's going slowly, and it's not hard for the defense to defend, and they're not scrambling or anything like that. And so then you're looking for, you know, stuff like a skip pass or something like that for a good opportunity. Um, if you're guard-driven, if, if you can get more stuff going through guards, as we saw Indiana able to do once Xavier Johnson really got comfortable in the ball screen offense, then things can move faster and can scramble a defense more easily. But if Indiana is going to take what they were kind of offensively at the, maybe the last, you know, three to four weeks of this season up to another level next year, you've got to hit some shots. Like you, you can't be guard, you can't be guard driven in basketball without being able to hit the three. And so well, still- that, that was kind of the one thing that 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 race trace front court combo allowed you to get away with was you didn't need a ton of threes if you had two guys that could get you a lot of high percentage twos. If you're going to lose that and not necessarily have immediate replacement for it, and you're thinking, okay, we're going to pivot more like what you said, Jim, to being a little bit smaller, a little bit more sort of four out, one in, and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's great, but you you need to hit some shots. You need to have at least one or two guys that are really, really, you know, Ryan Klein, Nick Zeisloft, Christian Watford level dangerous shooting threes. Uh, absolutely, and we got the final four coming up this weekend. Uh, who are your picks? I, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, what is it? It's I'm struggling all of a sudden. It's Villanova, North Kansas. Carolina, Kansas. Villanova. Kansas. Villanova lost one of their starters with an Achilles injury last week. So Duke, I would. Duke they looks like my team. it's really like Duke is just rounding into a certain kind of form that is very familiar to me as somebody who grew up with Mike Shashevsky. Um, grew up in the ACC. I mean, that, that Texas Tech game in particular, the last three minutes, it was just tough shot after tough shot after tough shot, and they were making them. I think they're getting the best out of Paolo Bancaro right now, um, which I, I don't think I would have always said this season. And then that is opening things up for the dudes around them, you know, guys like Keels and, you know, guys that want to knock down some threes but also get on the ball. Um you know, if, if you're making me pick a, a winner this weekend, it probably is Duke. There's also an element, and this is intangible, and there's no real science to back it up, but there is also an element of kind of the revenge of losing that that home game to UNC at the end of the regular season. It's just – it's hard for me to imagine Duke losing to UNC in this game, frankly. Um, and then if you get Krzyzewski to a national championship game, I'll, I'll probably back Krzyzewski. 